Hello guys, welcome to my channel HVR Tutorials. In this video, we will look into CSS Combinator Selectors. So in my earlier videos, we have already looked into CSS Simple Selectors and CSS Attribute Selectors, right? So in both of these videos, the common thing is we have used attributes or attribute values. So in case if your element is not having any attribute, what you are going to do? For example, in every web page, you will have some web elements and it is not mandatory that every web element should have the attribute, right? So what if your web element is not having any attribute? We want to identify this element, but we are not able to do it because we have learned only identifying the element using attributes and attribute values, right? So in this video, we will learn a new technique that is taking the reference of the other elements and finding the current element. So for example, if your element is not having any attribute or it might be a duplicate one in that case, you have to take the reference of the other element and based on that other element, you have to find out the current element. So here we are establishing one relationship guys. So based on this relationship, we are going to find out the elements. So here CSS combinator selector means you are writing a pattern using a relationship. So in that case, we call that pattern as a CSS combinator selector. So here, how many types of CSS combinator selectors do we have? We have around four types of CSS combinator selector. So these are the things, descendant selector, child selector, adjacent sibling selector, general sibling selector. So if you have already known these relations in the XPath, you might be seeing less relations here compared to the XPath. In XPath, you will have more relations like child, descendant, ancestor, parent, siblings, preceding sibling, following sibling, right? But here we have very less number of relations. So those are only four relations here. Okay. So here in CSS guys, the main thing is the flow, the flow of finding the elements is actually one way direction. It is not a two way direction. So it is always a one way direction. So in XPath, if you see, we have something called parent, we have something called ancestor, right? So those are like in a reverse way we are going, we are finding one element from there we are going upside. But here we cannot go upside. We have to go only in one direction that is downside. Okay. From the root element, you have to come downside only. So that is the reason we have only four relations here. So those are descendants, child, siblings. In siblings, we have adjacent and general sibling. So a descendant means it is like a kind of children plus grandchildren. So when you use descendant selector, it will fetch the child and grandchild also. And the second one is child. So here it will fetch only the child. And the next one is sibling. The sibling means which share the same parent. For example, you have two elements A and B. So for this A and B, if the parent is same, then we call this A and B are siblings. Okay. So otherwise, for example, you have A and B, but A is inside another div and B is inside another div. Okay. So we cannot call this A and B are siblings because they are sharing different, different parents. Right. So here, first let me open the application. And we will see each of these things. Okay. So here I have one application that is HVR tutorials. I'll simply mouse over on Selenium practice. I'll click on CSS selectors practice. So first let me open the developer tools here. So here in this notepad, I have copied all those selectors names here. Okay. So the first one is descendant, then child, then adjacent sibling, then general sibling. So first for descendant, let me just inspect any of these things. So you see, this is entirely one container. This all the elements are present inside one container, that container, I mean one div. So the div class name is container. Okay. So inside that, if you see here we have one drop down. So this drop down is basically present inside one div, that div is present inside the main div. So that means that drop down is a grandchild of this container, right? So it is not a direct child. It is a grandchild of this container. And we also have another select. So another drop down here. So this one is sharing the this div only as a parent. So that means this is a child of this div. So now if I use the descendant, I should be getting these two drop downs. Okay. So this one has a class. So if we just use the class for class, we need to use dot symbol container so this is a css so just ignore so this is also css so here is the element okay so inside this we need to find out the drop downs right the descendant drop downs 
So for finding the descendants, we need to use space. You don't need to write the space exactly, okay? You need to simply give space, then your element name. Now you see, it is identifying two elements. This one, first one, this is actually a child. And the next one, this is the grandchild. So it is giving me two elements, guys. So this is how you have to use the descendant selector, basically. You have to use a space for finding any descendant. So even if, for example, if your element is having any attribute, so here you can provide that attribute details inside the square brackets, okay? So let me just copy this and paste it here. So this is the selector that we have written. So the next one is child selector, okay? So here, as I said, we have two dropdowns. One is a child, another one is a descendant, right? So for example, I wanted to find out this child only. So how I can do the syntax is almost similar, but here, instead of space, I need to give greater than symbol, okay? So this greater than symbol will find the child. So here, if you see this one, this is the child of this div, container div, okay? So for example, you wanted to find out this another div. So what I will do, this div is a child of the main div, right? So I will write something like this. So in the main div, I am taking this div. This is child of this div. So in this div, this select is a child. So that is how you have to write the CSS selector, guys, for finding the element using child selector. Okay. So this is a child selector. And the next one is adjacent sibling. So here sibling means, as I said, if both the elements are sharing same parent, then we call them as sibling, right? But what is meant by adjacent sibling and what is a general sibling? So here, let me just write something like this. I have one div. So inside div, I have one input. I have another input. And I have one label. So let me just put this label in the start. Okay. So let me close this too. For example, I have, just imagine I have something like this. Okay. So here, these three elements are siblings only, right? This label, input, and this input. They all are sharing the relation with, I mean, the parent as div only. Okay. So, but here, if you see, this label, after this label, immediately this input is there. So we call this input as an adjacent sibling. So it is just immediate after that label, okay? So in that case, we call that as an adjacent sibling. Adjacent means just immediately. And general sibling means after this label, whatever the siblings are there, all those siblings it will give, okay? So this input also will be a sibling of this label. This input is also a sibling of this label. But when you use adjacent sibling, only you will get this one. But when you use general sibling, you will get this one and this one also. So that is the main difference. So let me just go back to the application. So here, what I will do, I will just inspect any of this element, you see. So I wanted to find out this dropdown only, but not using the this main div. Just before this one, we have this element, right? So I will use this element reference and find this one because this and this are siblings only, right? So that is why this has placeholder text, so I will write input and the placeholder attribute name is placeholder equal. I'm giving the exact test. So I'm using equal symbol. So now we got the element, this element, right? So now we are going to find out this adjacent sibling. So for finding any adjacent sibling, we have to use plus symbol plus select. See? Now we are able to identify this drop down, but not using parent. We are using the adjacent sibling pair relation. So this is how you have to use. For adjacent sibling, the syntax is plus. Let me copy this. So next one is general sibling. So here, if you see, after this input, we have one anchor tag, one label, another input, and br. So we have multiple brs here. Right, so for finding general siblings, we have to use tilde symbol and any tag. Let's say br is there. Okay, so if I give br, see after this, 
whatever the BRs are available as a sibling, it will find out all those BRs. See, this is the first one. This is the second one. And this is the third one, right? So similarly, if you want to find out A, anchor tags, we have one anchor tag here and we have another anchor tag here. They both are siblings only, right? See, it will identify this one. So this is how you have to find the general siblings. So as I said, if you are coming from XPath, there you have seen preceding sibling, following sibling, right? So what we used to do, for example, I, I used this element, right? So from here, I can find out any of these elements also, the preceding siblings. But in this CSS selector, you cannot use these preceding siblings. So here, if I write input, you see, it is giving only one. After this input, I have only one input sibling. But there are multiple inputs before this one. But it is not finding those elements, right? So that means this one is actually finding the elements in the forward direction, not in the backward direction. In CSS selectors, everything is a forward direction only. So let me copy this. So this is how you have to find the elements using combinator selectors, guys. That means based on the relationships. So this is about the relationships in the CSS selectors, guys. So if you have any doubts, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. I hope you enjoyed this session. If you like this video, please hit the like button and also share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.